President Biden will give an Oval Office speech tonight, just one day after pledging U.S. support to Israel. On his flight back to the U.S., the president said he was blunt with Israeli leaders about the need for humanitarian aid in Gaza. If they have an opportunity to relieve the suffering of people who are, have nowhere to go, um, they're going to be, uh, it's what they should do. And if they don't, they'll be held accountable. Let's bring in CBS News senior White House correspondent Weijia Zhang now. Weijia, the president's message to uh, Israel was the U.S. will support you and there should be humanitarian aid for Palestinians. How will his Oval Office address tonight be different? Well, for starters, it is in the Oval Office, and any time any president makes a speech from there, it really suggests how serious, how solemn even the subject is. And so we expect to hear a lot of the same points that we have heard since the president um, gave his first remarks about uh, the brutal attack in Israel. But I think today he will focus more on what's next, next steps, especially with regard to an aid package um, that he alluded to in Israel. He said that this week he was going to ask Congress for an unprecedented package to help support um, the Israeli military. And so we have learned through our reporting that Israel has requested $10 billion, but he will talk about a broader package. And um, we've also learned that it is expected to include money for not only Israel, but for Ukraine, border security, as well as Indo-Pacific countries like Taiwan. And it will be a roughly $100 billion package. And this will be um, in addition to the budget. So it's called a supplemental request. And that money, $100 billion, is expected to last for about one year. So I think he will talk largely about that, not only about Israel, but we got guidance, Errol, that he'll also be talking about the conflict in Ukraine, because the way the president sees all of these uh, wars is that it also has a great deal to do with the national security of the United States as well. So I believe he will talk about that and try to stress to Americans why this aid is so urgently needed. Um, mm. But we're still waiting to hear more guidance, more details from the White House, and we'll continue to keep you posted as we learn more about what to expect. Yeah, Ouija, and, uh, you know, last yesterday evening, the president was initially meant to be meeting face-to-face -face with some of the Arab leaders in the region. Instead, he spoke with them by phone as he was uh, either before he departed Israel or on his way back, and including Egyptian President and Abdel Fattah al-Sisi. And uh, the president said al-Sisi was completely cooperative in this plan to get aid to Palestinians in Gaza and out of where it's standing by in Egypt. But I understand that something could certainly derail those efforts. Absolutely. So this is important, Errol, because there are a lot of concerns about how much the president could accomplish um, by going to this trip if he wasn't going to have that face time uh, with those Arab leaders because the president himself has said that diplomacy, you know, when you're sitting down in front of someone is very different than when you're on the phone. Mm -hmm. But he said he had no regrets about not having that meeting because in the end he was ultimately able to accomplish one of his biggest goals for the trip, which was to get Egypt to agree to open up that humanitarian corridor to allow up to 20 trucks carrying aid into Gaza, because so far um, they have been going without for several days now. He also made clear, though, Errol, to your point, that um, the flow would absolutely stop if Hamas were to gain control of this aid, if they were to stop the trucks and try to take the aid, because certainly um, the U.S. will not be funding, you know, terrorists. So uh, he made that very clear. And um, I imagine that was part of the deal with Israel, too, to allow that aid to flow in, because Israel has had a complete siege on this trip. So they also had to agree to allow this humanitarian aid to flow in. But he mentioned that um, First, that actual physical road has to be paved, and that is what crews are working on. So then once the trucks are, are able to go, they'll be bringing in medical supplies, uh, food, bare necessities really for these um, civilians who are struggling and, and some trying to survive. And, and the other complicating factor, Ouija, is, you know, here in the U.S., students at Harvard, for example, issued an open letter saying they disagree 
with the U.S. funding and support of Israel, and there's a bit of a backlash happening against those students, some executives saying don't hire them. How is the president going to navigate his unyielding support for Israel, but also keeping support for Palestinian Americans and others who are sympathetic to that cause? So this is a really fine line, Errol, that I think um, it is very difficult for the president to walk because, of course, Israel is a, one of the, um, uh, the country's closest allies, certainly the closest ally in the region. Uh, and that is why we've heard so many times from the president that the U.S. support is unwavering. But now we're getting to a point where, um, you know, Palestinian Americans are saying, what about us? And of course, there is this perception in the Arab world, too, that um, the president is not taking as much care and interest to make sure uh, that those civilian lives, the number lost, are controlled and brought down. But he did say to Israel yesterday, Errol, and during his remarks, that, you know, do not act in anger. And I think that was as close as he was going to get to asking Israel to practice restraint. But to your point, it is very difficult, and it's something that the administration acknowledges is not easy. Folks will be watching his words very closely, that speech at 8 p.m. Everyone can watch it here live. Weijia Zhang at the White House. Thank you.